lecture. My name is Sanjeev Shah, and I'm a heart failure cardiologist at Northwestern University in Chicago, where I'm also director of research for the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute. Well, we know that drugs like Mavicant and cardiac myosin inhibitors are beneficial in patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in improving exercise tolerance, reducing the LV outflow tract <clears throat> gradient. And there's been some promising early results in randomized trials in non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy like Mavicamptin in the Maverick trial, which showed that the drug reduced nt p and troponin. And so we thought that you know it's possible that drugs like cardiac myosin inhibitors like Mavicamptin could be beneficial in the subset of patients with heart failure and a preserved ejection fraction who have an ejection fraction greater than 60%. And it's, I think, widely known that those patients really have a lack of therapies. Many neurohormonal antagonists, such as MRAs, RNAs, ARBs, don't really seem to work in that patient population. And so there's a big unmet need. And these patients with upper-level EF or hypercontractility really may benefit from cardiac myosin inhibition. Yeah, Mavicamptin is a small molecule inhibitor of cardiac myosin. It's selective, and what it does is it basically reduces the excessive actin myosin cross-bridging that occurs in states of hypercontractility. Um, it basically reduces the number of myosin heads that are on the on state. And the way I think about it is if I was squeezing a spring and I was really squeezing hard, you know, and not letting go, that's kind of what happens in a lot of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And we think in some patients with HEFPEF who have these higher end of ejection fraction. And, and what, what uh, Mavicamptin and drugs like it do are just basically softens that grip. And when we do that, we're better able to fill the left ventricle and relieve that excessively high left atrial pressure and pulmonary congestion. At least that's the hypothesis. Well, this was a really exploratory open-label study, and let me tell you why we did it that way. You know, although we know that improving relaxation, reducing LV stiffness would be good in HEFPEF, you know, it'll, like I just said, it would help the left ventricular um, filling. We also know that many patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction have abnormalities in systolic function. Their global longitudinal strain is often abnormal. That's a subtle marker of systolic function. And we also know that they have been paired LV contractile reserve. So it's very possible that Mavicamptin and drugs like it could harm patients with HEFPEF. And therefore, we felt that it was ethical to really, only ethical to really start with an open label exploratory study. So these are patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction who were enrolled in the trial. They had to have an ejection fraction of at least 60%, an elevated NT pro BNP, and evidence of left ventricular hypertrophy. And once they were enrolled, they were all treated with Mavicamptin for 26 weeks, and then we had an eight-week washout period. Now, during that 26 weeks, ejection fraction was assessed multiple times. We also did exercise echocardiography at multiple time points to look at exercise uh, changes in exercise diastolic function and LV contractile reserve. And at the 12-week time point, we did measure ejection fraction and NT pro BNP, and based on those levels, we decided protocol defined decided whether the patient should be up titrated from a dose of 2.5 milligrams of Mavicamptin to 5 milligrams of Mavicamptin. Well, the primary endpoints for this study were NT pro BNP and high sensitivity troponin T. And what we found was that in the study, those both decreased uh, significantly during the treatment period. So over that 26-week period, we see it saw a consistent decline in nt pro BNP and high-sensitivity troponin T. And during the washout period, those levels went back up to baseline, uh, suggesting that this was a true benefit, although we need randomized clinical trials to really uh, validate these findings. Now, other findings were that uh, high-sensitivity troponin I also went down, and resting and peak exercise a diastolic function variables on echocardiography also improved. So it looked like diastolic function was improving as well, uh, and that was really promising. Now, uh, I think it's important to note that uh, the drug also seemed to be quite safe. There were three patients who we had to discontinue study drug because ejection fraction dropped, um, but in all three, it recovered. And um, in two of those patients, we didn't even feel like the ejection fraction drop was related to the study drug. Uh, for example, in one patient, they stopped all their medications, including the study drug. 
The study drug uh, was not detectable uh, concentrations in the blood on pharmacokinetic analysis, and that's why we think uh, they had a, a hypertensive crisis and the ejection fraction went down. So it's a very small study, uh, but some promising early findings. Well, I think it's really exciting. I mean, obviously, we have to be very cautious of these findings. I think the main thing is that we had in the protocol we used, we showed that the drug is safe. No patients had an ejection fraction drop below 30%. And as I said, the drug was uh, fairly well tolerated. Now, uh, I think it really promotes future randomized clinical trials of drugs like Mavicantin and other newer generation cardiac myosin inhibitors, because what we can see is, I think the most important finding is that diastolic function is improving, and that is significant, and it's associated with an improvement in biomarkers of stress, like NT-proBNP, and cardiomyocyte injury, like troponin. And the mechanism, I think, is really fascinating. Although we don't think HEF-PEF, even in the higher range of ejection fraction, is just like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it is different. I think what happens in some of these patients is that the contractility and the ejection fraction is high, and that impairs the, the ability for it to increase further during exercise. Furthermore, if it, the left ventricle is really hypercontractile and non-compliant, and there's tension in late systole, early diastole, the coronary microvasculature can't fill. And so you have coronary microvascular dysfunction, which has been shown in this subset of HEFPEF. So for all those reasons, we think that these drugs are having a real effect, even though we only uh, studied it in an open label trial, and really paves the path for future randomized clinical trials. In fact, we're doing a randomized clinical trial of a next generation cardiac myosin inhibitor in HEFPEF. That's called the Aurora trial. That's a randomized clinical trial. It's a dose finding study, and it's well on its way to being completed. The, the full findings of the study were published simultaneously with my presentation at the Heart Failure Society of America meeting, uh, and those uh, results are in JAMA Cardiology.